Today, we're literally going to see one of my favorite and our favorite performances of Card Magic of all time. We're going to re react and respond in real time. I want to give you guys a little background of what we're going to see. Uh, there was a time before the internet, and you couldn't even find this anywhere. It didn't even exist. One day when I was living in Los Angeles in my middle 20s, I was called on the phone by Max Maven. And I was told that Max Maven, perhaps the world's uh, preeminent mentalist, mind reader, was having a sleepover party with Eugene Berger at his apartment, which was four blocks away from mine. And the two of them wanted to invite me over to watch a magic show. And then they played for me the tape we're about to see, which was clearly one of their favorite examples of magic ever created. And they literally loved it so much, they wanted me to see it so that they could watch my face as I got to see what real magic looks like. So bear with us because you're dealing with a black and white recording from a television program, I think in the early 60s, I think 64 or so, uh, no later than 66. And we're gonna break it down effect by effect uh, and talk ab about our, our favorite moments and really share with you one of the best examples of magic we've ever seen. Let's do it. Jane Canasta, everybody. Good evening again. My name is John Freeman. And welcome for the last time to another series of remarkable demonstrations by Chan Canasta. Uh, let me just say very briefly and no less sincerely because it is for the last time that none of us who have anything to do with presenting this performance are in league with Mr. Canasta. The BBC quite simply all right, yes, I'm... we're not in league with Mr. Canasta either. We're going to skip that. Skip a bit, Brother Maynard, skip okay. a bit. And especially well known to those of you who live in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly. All right, let me find. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the panel. Okay. Welcome to the show. And thank you very much once again, everybody, for viewing in. It's a sad occasion for me, because it is the last time, and I shall miss you all. Not you, I haven't seen you before. <laughs> I shall miss you all. <laughs> and of course, you, sir, Mr. Freeman. When you said before that we are not in the league for the last time, you said it with a smile. Why is that? It's absolutely true, Jan. Eleven times, I think, that we're not in the league. We are not. Ten times. Ten times. Ten times. Well, not in the league, but you did say it with a smile. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, we are not in the league. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, may I first of all tell you that tonight I would like to do several experiments with cards and books, perhaps that you've seen before. Sort of a recap of one of the very early, one of the first shows I think that I did here on BBC last year. May, may I ask, what is his, where's he from? Where's Chan Kanat? What accent is this? I don't know. We could it's spend Polish. a year worrying about it. It's Polish. It's Polish. Listen. But the difference is that after three or four experiments that we shall do, I shall ask you, members of my panel, as representatives of the public, so to speak, to ask me any question, any pertaining question that you wish to ask. I promise on my part, uh, pertaining to one of the tricks or experiments that you saw before, you know, you see three or four of them, and then I shall be very happy after a suggestion, I think, also by Mr. Freeman some time ago, to explain it to you in detail, sort of analyze the whole thing, the whole experiment from the beginning until the end. So would you first of all pay very close attention to the experiments that we are, we are about to do, right? right? Now, the first one, we both, few, first three or four experiments will be done with playing cards, and then one experiment perhaps with books. With cards, as follows. I think we've got a couple of facts here. And the first experiment, I used to term it an experiment memory, in memory, done with 52 playing cards, minus jokers, with all the members of the panel in the following way. Red pack, 
it doesn't matter on television because we can't see the difference between red and blue. However, there are two different packs. One is red, one is blue. From the pack, which consists of 52 different cards, as you can see, <laughs> if you actually closer. Oh, yeah. You have to believe me, however. <laughs> I shall ask you to select very quick class over the three. <laughs> they are 52 different cards. Yeah. I shall ask most of you to take a few cards each from the pack in the following fashion. Ma'am, would you be first? I shall approach you. And from the pack, would you please take, let's say, five, six, seven cards, eight cards from the pack, whatever you may wish to take them from. From anywhere. From anywhere. We'll hold one bunch. Mm -hmm. Take them That's enough. That's too many. Is <laughs> it? <laughs> no, no, not really. Not really. <laughs> Sir, would you please from the pack anywhere you wish, and one bunch and one go, take several cards. Take more of yours. Take more than that. No, I can't Thank you. Them. Well, hold on your hand. Don't look at the end. Ma'am, from the pack, anywhere you like, would you please take a few? From whatever you wish, as many as you wish. Thank you indeed, quite a lot of that. Sir, from the pack, anywhere you wish, as many as you wish, not too many perhaps, because too many have been taken, however. Ready? No, just just now, though. Doesn't matter, you made from two, but you, uh, yeah. you took a lot of that. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Um, no. <laughs> well, not many are left, no, but the point is, you see, I have to remember every single card that you take. So if you take ah. too many, I probably miss one or two. However, let's continue. Man, from the pack, whatever you wish to take. Is that all right? right? I just want to say something right away, okay? So, yeah. the in the old days, uh, audiences had a lot more patience. Uh, waiting for the first effect to happen. Am I correct in saying that, that this kind of thing maybe, you know, doesn't fly today? Well, certainly not on television and certainly not for a cold audience that you're accosting them as a stranger in a cocktail party. But I think if someone introduces you and you've got a real crowd, you can open in any engaging way, Steve. I was going to say, and, and you might know more about this than me, but I think this was a special. Mm -hmm. like, it, you know, it came on TV, and he did three of them, I think. Well, they just, said, they just said 11, right? So there were... Oh, seven, did they say 11? So there, Well, that's what he said here was 10, but they have... And I assume that they just filmed a couple of them, but they had... You know, he had a special in 63, you know, and another one in yeah, 65, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he was always varying the same core act. Yeah. So we're five minutes, almost six minutes in, and we haven't seen anything yet. And that's, you know, that wouldn't fly today, I don't think. Thank you. So may I give you two cards too? Yes, please. Thank you indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to me to tell you exactly who has taken what card, and I should do it very quick. So starting with you, ma'am, how many cards have you selected? How many cards have you taken? Would you please mix them all the cards in your hand, rearrange them if you wish. Would you please look at your eight cards, look at them all, and one by one I'll tell you what you have. Now, please hold them higher so I cannot peek, you see? I shall tell you one by one what you have. Oh, no, come on, uh, please. I mustn't look at you because behind you is a monitor, and on the monitor are the cards. Right? Did you notice? So I mustn't look at you, but I'll tell you, please look at your cards. I'm looking away from That's my... what it's like to perform on a Zoom show, by the way. <laughs> I think you've got the following cards in your hand. And after each card, just say yes or no, whatever the case might be. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. The Six of Hearts. Yes. The Eight of Clubs. Yes. Jack of Spades. Yes. Three of Hearts. Yes. King of Diamonds. Yes. Ten of Spades. Yes. And the two of clubs. Yes. Thank you. How many cards have you seen? No, please don't applaud. Please okay, don't... so guys, <laughs> David Blaine just did this uh, special, uh, his, his latest special where his daughter, his seven or eight year old daughter does this trick via FaceTime. Uh, it's pretty amazing, but, uh, but it's pretty funny because uh, it's, it's relevant again today as featured on the latest Blaine special. It's also relevant if you take a look at these cards, a lot of modern cards, uh, it's just as easy to tell what the red cards are as it is on here. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. Well, see, I have to not applaud because if I'm wrong, next time you'll have to boo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait until the end. How many cards do you say? Seven. Seven. Now, in your case, I should be very fast, may I? As, yes. quick, as quick as I possibly can be. Are you ready? Yes. Are you very quick usually? Well, not usually. Not usually. Take a chance. Just, all right, here we go. The following seven cards are in your hand. The four of hearts, eight of spades, six of clubs, jack of diamonds, eight of hearts, king of spades, three of clubs. Absolutely right. Thank you. I don't know, am I right or wrong? You're absolutely right. right. Thank you. How many cards? Notice there, too, that Chan did two effects that were exactly the same, and he's smart enough to know how to vary the second uh, performance of that uh, effect right so that it appears to be slightly different than the first so how did he do that 
he decided to go through them in lightning speed, which would vary the performance style between the first effect and the second effect, even though they were at exactly the same effect. And, and, Two months. Two, Twelve. And for those of you who are thinking about what's happening here, you probably understand that the, what we're dealing with is a prearrangement. Might as well just get that out of the way. Uh, he's using a really easy prearrangement. He's using eight kings, but you'll notice that the way he manipulates it and works it, he's, he's going that fast with any anything is really quite a challenge, right? So let's see how he varies it on the third round. Well, Wilson, it's almost a bridge hand. <laughs> However, I think the following are your 12 cards there. A red queen of hearts, if I'm not mistaken. Have you? Yes. An ace of clubs. Yes. Four of spades. Yes. Six of diamonds. Yes. Eight of spades. Yes. Jack of hearts. Yes. King of clubs. Yes. Ten of hearts. Yes. Three of diamonds. Yes. Two of spades. Yes. Nine of diamonds. Yes. Seven of clubs. Yes. And a five of hearts. Say no. Wait a minute, I can't find it. Well, first no, no, I no, I haven't got that. You haven't got it. Some yeah. Earth must have had it there. Mm. See, I missed one. How many cards have you, sir? Well, I've got six. Six? Well, I'm sorry. If I forget one or two of yours, would you forgive me? Certainly, yeah. Thank you. Because I think I did forget. <laughs> However, I think you have, sir, a red eight of diamonds. Yes. Have you? And a black jack of clubs. Yes. Good. And I think you've got the king of spades, eight of hearts, and a three of clubs. I've got the king of spades. But three of clubs. Yes. Good. And ten of diamonds. No. What is, what is it then? Ten of clubs. You see, I made a mistake again. Two cards I've missed. How many cards have you, man? Did I tell you all of your cards? No. One more is missing? Yes. Hmm. A uh, red two? Yes. Two of diamonds? Quite right. Thank you. How many cards have you got? <laughs> seven. Well, as we progress, you see, I'm left really with about six cards, and I don't think I can do it, but seven cards have you, and I think you've got a red four of hearts, have you? Yes. No, I don't think you have. I think you've got, let me do it a different way. I think you have a black seven, no, red seven, seven of diamonds. Yes. Have you? Yes. No. You see? Let me think again. Uh, one a second, please. Diamonds. Yes. Good. A black seven of spades. Yes. Two of hearts. Yes. A black nine of clubs. Yes. Five of diamonds. Yes. And a queen of hearts. Yes. What is it? Queen of spades. Queen of spades, you see? Yeah. Is that all? No. A black four? No. I, think, I don't think you said it. No. <laughs> yes. Did I say it? No. Four? No. A five of hearts? Mm. He's missing five of hearts, you see? Yes. Where are many of you? Two. You have an ace? I have. An ace of diamond? Yes. And a black four? Yes. Four of clubs? Yes. And Jack's the poster. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Not very good. Oh, man. That's a startling effect, man. Yeah, that's beautiful. So good. <laughs> So you see, he's not afraid of making mistakes, right? And so one of the things he does is he's not doing any passes or anything, right? He's, he's cutting the deck and he's peeking, right? And so that's putting, there's big leaps by the time he gets to the end. There's big leaps from here to there. And it really seems like uh, he doesn't let it bother him. He just misses when he misses and then finds a way to justify it. Steve? I was going to say that's that 80% about, they say about mentalism, right? You can only be 80% right. Otherwise it's a magic act. And so, you know, if he misses a couple there, it's just part of the whole fabric, like of like of the performance, you know? Yeah. And he totally doesn't mind Now, My favorite part of this entire trick. And this is the thing that really, I don't know if anyone noticed because it took me, to, oh, I, I hate to admit how long it took me to notice. He says, when he starts this trick, I'm going to show you an experiment in memory. I'm going to show you a memory demonstration. Then he starts having people take out big groups of cards that he can't see, that he hasn't looked at, and that that's been shuffled. And then he starts telling you which ones he took. So there's a total Escher painting happening there where he's saying it's a memory demonstration and he's about to get into a discussion where he's going to analyze. Remember how he promised he's going to explain how everything works? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Tell me, panel, how on earth is that a memory demonstration? <laughs> right. did, did you notice as it was happening? I yes. didn't. I did not notice that. But you no, I didn't notice that either. And I've seen this a bunch of times. I never thought of that. Right. So it, it challenges what we're taught about clarity of effect because, and, and it's best taught by an example because there's no law to apply to that. Right? He says, I'm going to show you a memory demonstration. Take out a bunch of cards. You got the this, the that, the other. It's a divination. 
Let me ask you this. Do you think it was maybe a Freudian slip? No, not in the slightest. I think it's the presentation. Like, like that's how it's, it's, it, he is literally uh, conflating. It's a pseudoscientific explanation, but it doesn't even bother to go all the way there. He gives you enough of a framework that you think you understand what's about to happen. Then he just comes at you with something that just can't, isn't even a demonstration of that, right? It's a divination, pure and simple. But now I think when you watch his explanation, wait, he promised to explain everything, right? He promised to expose all his secrets because it's not magic, it's science. Watch this. All right. And yes, he did. He's, he's overhand shuffling all the time with, uh, you know, a simple, package shuffle. a simple overhand shuffle. Yes, it's a, this is not really good. I don't like very much this, you know, this particular experiment because it always worries me. However, the next one is slightly different. It's an experiment in sort of transmission of thought. As you very well know, perhaps by now, ladies and gentlemen everywhere, I do not really believe in transmission of thought being possible, not on a show business basis. However, this looks like transmission of thought. We shall take perhaps two gentlemen of the jury, you two gentlemen, two packs of playing cards, and the following is the experiment. This pack for you, sir, please hold them. And the blue pack for you, sir, and the following is the experiment. Both of you will take one card each. You from the blue pack, sir, which is also 52 cards minus the joker, and you, sir, from the red pack. Yet by some sort of coincidence, I'm, I'm sorry, both of you will take one card each, you from here and you from there. Yet, by some sort of coincidence, both of you will take exactly the same card. Did he just tell us the plot of the trick he was about to do? Mm -hmm. And he does Breaking it. all the rules. He, he does it in each case. He tells you exactly what he's going to do before he does it. Yeah, I mean, modern, just modern day thinking on that is that we never tell the spectator what to expect, what's going to happen, uh, or we very rarely do that. But uh, that's interesting. Interesting choice. Okay. Well, it certainly puts him in a situation where if he doesn't deliver, and this is going to happen over and over and in increasingly messed up ways, if he doesn't deliver the miracle, right, it, it's not going to be good because he's promising something so impossible that you're really, all right, prove it, hotshot, you know? And, and so this is a great example, and there's another one later that uh, I think makes the point. Beautifully. I don't know how you will do it. I don't know if you will do it. <laughs> All I know is, gentlemen, if you do not do it, it does not reflect on me. <laughs> so please do it. Sincerely now, sir, most people, of course, think I make you take a card, you see, but this is not so, because right now, sir, from the pack, I shall ask you to take any card that you wish. Upon selecting, place it into your pocket, sight and see. But really exercise your own free choice to the utmost, will you? So, yeah. so from the pack, sir, take your time, hesitate as much as you wish, take absolutely any card into your pocket, sight and see. Are you all right? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. Thank you. you? Anywhere, anyone, into your pocket, sight and see. Change your mind if you wish. No, I'll straight Into your pocket. pocket. Sir, do you or do you not know the card that he's taken? No, I don't. You do not. Yet it's up to me now to tell you exactly what card he's taken from a blue pack. Up to you to take exactly yeah. the same card. Yeah. May I? Could you do it possibly? I doubt it very much. I'll try. I doubt it too. <laughs> how would you try? You don't even know how to try, right? No, no, I don't. So look, there are 52 cards here, as you see once again. Yeah. Everyone is a different one, different card. You will take any card that you wish, sir, and it will be the same card as he has on one condition. The condition is that you can think like this. I am going to take the same card. I must take the same card. So what a suggestion that you must take the card. Right. Then you will be yourself, sir, the first one to be surprised. Because no matter what card you take, it will be his. However, after you take it, if you do not, didn't, didn't want to, or you didn't wish to, you won't have it, you know. Shall we try that now? Yes. Think. You must take exactly the same card. Think of a certain card? No, sir. Oh. No, sir. For, by, by no means. Oh. Think that you must take his oh, card, right, whatever his right card, card is. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Is he, is he being... Uh, is he being really vague on purpose there? What's well, going on? It, well, is he being really vague or really specific? What do you mean, Steve? I, it didn't seem vague to me what he's saying there. He's, okay. A Adam, what do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? Saying if you want it to be the same card, it will be. 
if well, you don't really want it to be, it won't be. And it's not on me. That's on you. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, all right. But then the guy, but then the guy seemed confused and asked another question and he had to say, no, 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 that's not it at all. You actually, maybe, maybe I just misunderstood. There is an element of what you might call double talk in this, Adam. Like when, just that example of him, he hasn't done it yet, but he's going to go, now that we've done some stuff, we're going to talk about exactly how we do it. And when you watch him do that and you see how he managed to say absolutely nothing at all over a period of two minutes and everyone goes, ah, science, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think uh, it'll come into a fuller, I, fuller explain. I love how either cooperative or naive these people are one or the other. Well, they they do get their blood up over time. Oh, do they? A little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to it then. It's the martial yeah. arts thing. Happens. Go ahead. Just one. Doesn't matter what you take into your pocket. So, did you or did you not wish to take his card? I did wish to take his card. Because if you did, I assure you, it's the same card. If you didn't, however, tell us the truth, because the card is not the same. Did you wish to take it? I wish for all my heart. I think fun, sir. Yes. <laughs> you really did. Yes. Because I'm standing here, you may always change it at any moment that you wish. And it's very important words that I utter right now. However, you wished it. What's your card, sir? Unless you still change it. Uh, it's a five of hearts. Five of hearts. Could you show it to us? And let's show it to the camera so that everybody can see it's five of hearts, I think. And yours, sir? What is it? <laughs> what is it? The five of hearts it is. There you are. <laughs> so you did it and you succeeded. Why did you order? You won it. You won well, what do you think of that? Right. When you claim it's so big and so bombastic and then you succeed, you can't help but have them burst into applause, right? But otherwise, it's I think it's wow. rubbing, rubbing people wrong like like Adam was feeling. Like, you know, like, is this guy, what's what's up with this guy? Is he, is he messing with me? Because he's I just so, he's so almost like on, bordering on arrogant, right? Well, I think he is. I mean, he's definitely, if he doesn't engage those people to care, and play for or against, he can't push him one way or the other. Right? Right. I mean, I, I, it's a very difficult thing. And sometimes he's giving him a chance to change your mind, but you feel like maybe, as a magician, you feel like maybe, is he really giving him a chance to change your mind? Or does he want to be the audience to feel like he is? I feel like, I feel like that Canasta is an onion and there's a lot of layers for us to like. <laughs> <laughs> I had a new, a new layer occur to me in this last moment, which what has was not it? occurred to me before, which is that he became aware at a certain point in his life that his English as a second language type thing that's happening with him, right? It works to his advantage. Mm -hmm. so, so in addition to doing whatever he's doing, the fact that there's a little bit of confusion about what he's trying to communicate probably in general allows, probably opened up, a, contributed to opening up this entire line of, of magic for him. You know, probably when he got started, he would say something to people and they would go, huh, what, do you, what are you trying to say? And there's a big space in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, so is there a new question from the, uh, is he a magician who learned magic while he was in a concentration? Uh, no. Okay. He's not. He's not. And is he trying, let's say I answer Steve's question, is he trying to elicit cooperation? Hmm. I, I think so. I think he's trying to elicit engagement and cooperation. He wants them to get into it and feel like they can really do whatever they want and at the same time do what he wants them to do. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that pushing too. Like, hey, you're gonna do what I tell you to do in a moment, even though you don't think it's possible, right? I think it's a lot of, you know, just like making them trying to, you know, come on, stand up to me. <laughs> I get, you know, it's like a real push and pull that's going on there with, with those spectators. He's like working their minds in addition to what's happening with the effects. And, and that's important, right? Because if he's not working their minds, if their minds aren't, you know, flexing in order to, get in there with them, that's the sort of alchemy that allows him to make them have a great experience. You know, his first has to make them put some fight into it. He's got to make them invest emotionally. That's what's happening, right? Once they invest emotionally, once that effect happens, now they get the payoff and they really react because they're emotionally invested in the thing. Do you guys think he's likable? I think he's- I can't tell yet. 
I, I, I always go back and forth, you know, sometimes I really like him, but it, but it's my magic mind admiring how clever he is and how skillful he is. And then there's other times I look at it from the point of view of if I was a spectator sitting there, I don't know. I mean, I, I would, I would probably get the reaction that he's trying to get out of these folks, which is, you know, that push and pull. He's trying to get them to be right there with him. And in you that know, case, it's effective, right? Newell had a great comment here in chat. And he was saying about already at this point, he was a legendary personality. So I can totally read on these people that they feel in some way, uh, I wouldn't say lucky, but they're happy to be there, that they get to experience this, that... So they're definitely not with a giant wall up. They know what's going to happen and they're, they're there for the ride, you know? And it's the sixties too, right? I mean, yeah. that's when, when it really was true that like you would probably see a magician in your lifetime in person. So for that, mm -hmm. that, in that sense, that's a special occasion, right? That's like a, a celebration that they're, they're actually able to be invited to. Right. I mean, and they're all big stars. Right. These people there, they're not big stars. They're probably like B stars, I would imagine. I think they're like dancing with the stars. Yeah, they might be like that kind of, that's, that kind of yeah. level. That seems yeah. like a good analogy. Yeah, like that kind of level. In, in a lot of ways, where da how David Blaine handles his specials, where he always has celebrities appear on his specials so that we can watch big celebrities reacting to David Blaine doing magic. That's sort of uh, one of the thing that, things that Blaine has always been really successful at having in his specials and makes them really cool. I guess this is where it came from. Well, you know? there's absolutely no doubt that when it comes to uh, uh, Blaine and, and all of our modern greats, right, Darren Brown, they were definitely deeply influenced by this material, right? And right down to the effects and the methods, as you're going to see. For a moment. No, go on. No, ladies and gentlemen, please. At this moment, I'm absolutely certain that especially the men in our audience at home, of course, uh, are more, I should say, skeptical perhaps than the ladies. Men play cards more, know cards more than the ladies. Or am I right or wrong in saying that? Probably Would you say right. I'm right? Probably right. No, I men probably have more. I never you know, play. You never play. Neither do I. <laughs> no one wants to play with me. <laughs> For different reasons. But however, you know, so men are more up to spot or you know suspect something, yeah. foul play or so, sir. Did you think perhaps that I made you take a card to find myself forced the issue on you or something? Uh, no, I, Did I on you? chose freely. Absolutely no, freely? not at all. Madam, no. are you suspicious? Being a lady now, represent a suspicious lady. I'm amazed. I'm but, not no, suspicious. don't be amazed. Please say that you are skeptical. I'm not. But for the sake of the game, say yes. All right. I'm all right. Yes. <laughs> all right, so here we go. I shall ask you now to select, let's say, three cards together from the pack. Three together from anywhere you wish. Would you please do so? Yes. Take your time and take all the effort to take anywhere you wish, any three cards that you wish. Have you? Oh, four, doesn't matter. Take four, you wish, three. Okay. Would you please look at them? Mm -hmm. Select one card out of the three. Mm -hmm. Would you please take it out of the three or put, put all the three away? Let's say you've in your mind. Mm. Put them up behind you somewhere so nobody can see. You don't have pockets. Yes. Now you've selected three cards from the pack, right? Yes. From blue pack. Yes. Are you thinking of one? Yes. Do you think I know what you're thinking of? Let's see how it can. Yeah. Do you have suspicion, a sneaking suspicion? No. no. Not good. I hope not. <laughs> From the other pack, the red pack, may I do the experiment with you, ma'am? Yes. May I bring this forward, this little table? Will you bring it right here? I hope the cameras will be able to follow us. And may I place four cards before you from this other pack? And would you please kindly think of your card? If you have any, at any moment a suspicion that I know the card that you are thinking of, by all means change it. You have three cards there. I don't care what card you take, just one in your mind. Ready? From all these four uh, different cards, I shall select four and place them like this before you. One, two, three, four. So, nearer to you. There are four cards on the table before you. An impossible chalk. Would you please take one? Whichever one you wish. Or point to one. Yes. Point to it. Hold it. Now, would you be surprised to know that the card that you're pointing to is none other than the card that she thinks of? I wouldn't be at all surprised. I would. <laughs> Believe me, I would. Because at this very moment, she can still change her mind if she wishes. What is your card? Jack of Spades. Fine. Please open Jack of what? Spades. Spades. Open this that you touched. Oh, oh, Jack of Spades. Done. And Jack of Spades it is. So there you are. What about that? Well, at this point, she may still change her mind if she mm -hmm. wishes.
Didn't turn over that case. card. Yeah. Beat. Turn Think over that it. card. Right? It, at this point, she may still change her mind if she wishes. <laughs> it's different. Then at this point, she can still change her mind if she wishes. Turn over that card. Like even, <laughs> turn over that card. Like was there even a space? It felt like a space. That was really cleverly handled, wasn't it? That that whole construction there and how that worked, that, that, that really was clever and, and well thought out. Well, and they're largely the same method for everything, you know? Although there is one risky thing that he does that I've, you know, if you guys want to get to the great riddles and start thinking about them, uh, he certainly has a forcing method, which we all know is not 100%. And yet, he certainly, that's when the whole announcing what you're going to do thing in advance as a professional entertainer gets a little bit weird and becomes rather remarkable and strange. Because he's saying, you took a card. I'm going to ask you to take any card. Take the one she took, right? But then he's doing a method which is not foolproof, right? He's an and he's inciting. Like, for example, sometimes we tell the spectator what we're going to do, but we rarely say, I'm about to do a classic force and uh, you can change your mind or stop me or anything. And then, you know, we all know that those things like Steve said, maybe 80%, you know? I mean, you can track back, but he's not giving himself any place to track back from, Adam. Yeah, and that psychological force there, perfect. Um, all right, let me press on. Let's, let's press on, here we go. What's the camera, and the Thank you very much. Jack of Spades was. Why didn't you change your mind at the last minute? I almost did, yes, but then I thought, no, I won't. You see? Like, there you are. Done if she had been. You know what I would have done? Yeah. You'd have asked if I'd like to change my mind. Sound. No, no, you're holding your finger on it. I was going to change my mind, but I didn't. You see? There you are. Mm hmm. I think we actually lost the camera at that moment, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the monitors over there. But if she changed her mind, I, should, I would be wrong. But people would have gone wrong. Yeah. But people don't change their mind, do they? Not, well, they change their mind if I want them to. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't want them to. As long you see how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> because you've asked that question, sir, would you kindly come here? Oh, dear. Would you join us? Hey, everybody, buckle up. And do sit down and relax. That's it. On that? On that. <laughs> Can you? Oh, yeah. I think it's a wonderful chair. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The following is the next experiment, which you also saw, and I think I did it with Mr. Freeman. Now, I'm not doing it with Mr. Freeman, and nobody will suspect you of collusion with me, sir. Oh, no, no. How do you know? <laughs> well, because well, you are beyond suspicion. Are you beyond suspicion? I don't know. I, you are. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> sir, would you please hold the pack of cards in your hand? Wait, this hand? No, any hand. This hand. Oh, no, but joking, Capaccio, this is a very serious yeah, experiment yeah, now. Yeah. No, we, no, we would laugh before, oh, yeah. we would laugh after, but not during. No, no, no. no. I have to, you know, sort of make a straight face like that. <laughs> you make me laugh, really. Sorry. Um, it's all right. I like to. <laughs> I like to. Now, the following experiment I usually term an experiment in remote control, which to many people sound very odd. You know, remote control and all that. But actually it is, because from now on I shall not touch the cards, I shall not look at the cards, I shall not even look at you, sir, with your permission. Sure, sure, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, would you please first of all look at the cards in your hand to ascertain they're all different once again. They really are. And would you now please place them? No, don't count them. No, no, I'm just looking. Yeah, sure. oh, so they're all different. Yeah. Place them behind your back. Don't count them because they may be 53 there, you see. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything. No, no. Now, when I ask you, and not before, would you please just do this? When I ask you and I snap my fingers like this, would you please just cut the cards once like this behind your back? Do it nuts. Yeah. Have you done so? Yeah. Hold them together. Now, would you please take the first card from the top of the pack, do not look at it, no. place it in your right hand pocket, sight unseen. Have you? Yes. Now, would you please take the first card from the top of the pack right now, and sight unseen, place it into your left hand pocket. The next one, not on the Yes, card. into your left hand pocket, yes. without looking at the card. I've not seen that thing yet. Thank you. Do you know the two cards that you've selected? No, 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 no. No idea. Do I know them? 
I don't see how you can possibly How can I possibly not? Now look at the cards again in your hand. Now look at the cards that you hold. Yes. And that's shown all again. Mm. There are all different cards here, right? Yes. Now, so nobody could know what the cards are. But of course I know. And you know why. No. Because they expect me to. No. <laughs> 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 and the sun. So I know the two cards that you've selected. And I will tell you the two cards that you have in your pockets. Yet you, sir, on your own and by yourself, will tell us exactly in which pocket you have which card. And you will do so without looking at your pockets. And what's more, if you remember the experiment from before, no matter how he decides, no matter what he says, whatever he says will be. And then, after he decided and told us, we shall give you, sir, seven or eight seconds to change your mind. If you change your mind, the cards will change as you asked before. If you do not change your mind, the cards will not change, so do anything you wish, pertaining to your question you've asked before. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I think the following are the two cards in your pocket, sir. One is a red card, one is a black card. The black one is a three of clubs, the red one the ten of diamonds. The ten of diamonds, the three of clubs. Whatever you decide, sir, Tell us in which pocket you would like to have which card, it will be so. Then we'll give you time to change your mind if you wish, or not, or whatever you say. <laughs> Am I confusing you? No. Do you no. remember the two cards I told you? <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Ten of diamonds, three clubs, yeah. No, what, what? Ten of diamonds, three clubs. You said it's like it's going to happen. You have the three of clubs, a bigger part. And the ten of diamonds. Ten of diamonds. Right, sir, and decide that finally your decision rests the whole thing here. Whatever you say, say. But I'm only guessing. No, no, no. Decide whatever you say will be. Oh, I see. You can then change your guess All right. or decision. This is beautiful. Wow. That was genius right there when the guy repeated the right cards, but he jumped on him as if he might have made a mistake. It really you know, was. It just inserts that little bit of doubt, you know, that you need. The, the whole, in fact, I'm just watching the whole construct of this unfold and how the mechanics are so well hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a real lesson in magic right here, in mentalism. Uh, the onus is on you, and you will be right. Yes. Well, well say it. All right, then. All right, then. The Ten of Diamonds is where? Uh, well, uh, left or right, isn't it? It doesn't matter, yes. Say my, it. My, uh, my, right, my right pocket. Ten of wonderful. Diamonds. Please remember what you said. Oh, ten of diamonds, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Ah. Please remember. Ten of diamonds is in your right <laughs> pocket. Yes. Good. And the three of clubs, sir, in your left, left pocket. Please remember that. Ten of diamonds, where, sir? Right pocket. Three of clubs, where, sir? Left pocket. Wonderful. <laughs> now, sir, now I know that you remember. Now, come on, don't confuse yourself. <laughs> That's all right. I just reminded myself. Please. But once again, where? Ten of diamonds, where? The right pocket. Good. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, now I announce that this is exactly as he said, but as we said before, I have to give him at least seven seconds to change his mind. Amazing. Okay. This part makes me nervous. Just saying. Right. I'm getting a little nervous watching this right now. Whew. Okay. Let's see what happens. Are you nervous? It may as sound to you, sir. What's that? Are you nervous as a magician or nervous as a spectator? And no, as a magician. All I'm right. nervous because I know how things are right now. I know what the, what the setup is. I know where, where everything is. But how is he handling this moment? He's about to give him a chance to change his mind. If you change your mind, you don't have to change it, by the way. If you no. do change your mind, however, the cards will change. If you do not change your mind, the cards will stay as they are. You don't have to change your mind, therefore. But I have to give you the seven seconds. So here we go. One, two, three. Stop. I'll change your mind. <laughs> the ten of diamonds is now in my left pocket. Well, take it out. <laughs> ten of diamonds. Yes. Take it out. What is it? Ten of diamonds. Ten of diamonds. What? The Adam, you were you were reversed. Remember, it's ten kings threatened, right? Right. I was reversed. I, you were reversed. I thought they were actually in the opposite pockets. What did I just watch? What just happened? <laughs> Good. Good. It well, that's what we've all been leading up to, right? That's it. A, works. That's, that's our best documented. Uh, that, look, there's a little bit more of the show. You feel free to look it up. There's going to be a book test. But that's really the climax of the card set in this moment that, you know, 
we should talk about. What did you witness, Adam? Tell us what the effect was that you saw. Well, so just forget about all the, 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 the stuff leading up to it. I mean, that, that all is fine. Uh, you, you know, he is, he's his masterful work of, of a memorized deck and the ability uh, for him, that, that, that quick move he did where he, he just took the cards back for a moment, looked for one moment just to make sure he knew which two cards. He was pretty sure he knew which two cards. But then, then the fact that he knew which pockets they were in and then gave the, the person a chance to change their mind and that was the defining moment there because I did not think the guy was going to change his mind. I personally didn't. After all that confusion, remember, there was a ton of confusion there, making sure he knew what was where or what was where. I, he, he rehearsed it with the guy, made him repeat it. All that stuff happened. He was and poking then, him the whole time, poking him. Wherever you say it's going to be, that's where it's going to be. <laughs> and then that moment where he lets him change his mind. He counts the, the seven, I don't know why seven seconds, but seven seconds, and the guy changes his mind. Mm -hmm. At the last minute, and then he says immediately, reach in your pocket and pull out the card, and it's instant. You know? I'm not gonna give you a chance to go back, check it. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like anything else could have happened, right? It doesn't, it doesn't feel to us as though there was any possible um, like that was what was supposed to happen right and then the concrete hardened and that's the story we tell forever <laughs> so what so may i ask what what do you guys think what would have happened okay knowing i don't know a lot about chan canasta i've never seen this footage first time what do you think would have happened if the guy wouldn't have changed his mind it's one of the great mysteries i mean the truth of it adam is it's a so much fun for us to have We've got our theories, right? And we can share plenty of theories right here. But the fun part is, is that it's one of the most educational card tricks I've ever seen because trying to figure out what our answer would be to that very question, right? A, how to make it happen would happen. But what on earth is the way out? What mm -hmm. on earth do you do if he doesn't change his that. mind, right? I don't know. And you have to imagine that he had something equally as compelling so that when the concrete hearted after the, you know, going the other way, it would have seemed like the only way it could have gone. I think it just comes down to having presentation skills and being able to convince someone at the end of it that that's exactly the way it was supposed to go. Yeah, he may well have been counting quickly. He may, he, and we we'll certainly know that he's been working this act for a long time and he's making it as much space and time as he wants, right? It seems clear that there's an element of psychology in making the man do what he wants him to do. He clearly, I think it's safe to say, wanted him to change his mind, yep. right? Clearly. However, he obviously has to have some sense of whether or not this is a situation where he's gonna have it go his own way. He clearly wants it to go his own way. He clearly would like it to go his own way. It clearly would be wonderful if it went its own way, but all I know is if it did not go his own way, the fault was not his. No. So <laughs> if it didn't, we don't, uh, look, I can give you answers, but honestly, the question is the most interesting part because the question is, is there an out? One thing you said, Adam, is that all the stuff before it is fine, but I think embedded within what he's done beforehand somewhere is the answer to what happens if any of it goes wrong. And Some remember that, that there's a path that is chosen the moment he says, where is it? And when that guy says what's in either pocket, that's what's gonna determine what happens next, right? Because if he would have said that they were the right ones, I would imagine that that whole changing your mind thing would have been handled much differently, right? If you would have just said the right thing to begin with, now it's going to be, you could have changed your mind, but I know you don't wanna change your mind, or do you wanna change your mind? So you need, and he would have, you know, verbiage that would allow that man to feel confident that that's the way he needed to stay. And there was no reason to change his mind. But because he said the other way, he was instantly poking him, right? And are you sure? I mean, it's whatever you say, that's where it's going to be. I would imagine that sort of language would not have been as strong, right? If he chose the other way, if he said that they were, the, they were what they were supposed to be, right? Wow. So that's, that's, where, that's where the path diverges, I think. Furthermore, he's saying right now, right now, I win. Right now, he's saying you win, but he's saying right now, I win. 
it's done. I'm the king. Of course, well, all the time saying I'm not the king, you're the king. But that actually leads a person to believe that right now you have it by the teeth, you have it by the hair, you've got it, you've won. So being poked at that point, changing your mind might be the best way to throw a monkey wrench into your plans. You know, our, our, we have very, very smart members here at Conjure Community. So Dan was saying that he, he says, I ask Aussie the same question uh, that I ask, right? What would have happened if he changed his mind? He smiled and gave me three very good options. Well, Dan, why don't you put one in chat? Let us know what it would be. Uh, Ed, Ed says psychological. Did he plant the idea of changing his mind earlier in the discussion? when they ask if anyone ever changed their mind? That's a great question. Um, and John makes a good point. John Gosman says, in the end, he's right about the cards, no matter which pocket they're in. So that in itself is a bit telling because he, he still did get the two cards correct, even if they were in their own pockets. Um, Newell says here, Newell always knows uh, the right answer usually. So he's, Newell says he has put the spectator under pressure by counting seven seconds. You have seven seconds to change your mind. There may be a lot in that statement. Well, there is, but here's the thing. And Alex has got a sensational point, but what, look, at the end of the day, we don't know. And that's one of the beauties of it. But once he's doing it, once it was done, say, say they're wrong. Say it's only going to work if they change their mind, right? At that point, he doubles down. This is when most magicians in the world wisely hedge their bets, right? So he doesn't do that. He says, right now it's this way, but whatever happens next, it's gonna be the way it is. If you want them to change, then they're gonna change. When it's very much in doubt, we, we can all, talk about the seven seconds, whether they go faster than they should, whether they go slower than they should. But you only need to do with Hayden Chicago opener to know that you can work it a thousand different ways. Sometimes they change their mind. Sometimes they don't. So full stop. Yeah. Did you notice in the very beginning, he gave the guy the deck, he said, put it behind your back. And the guy was fiddling with the cards, right? I don't know if he took something out or whatever. And so then the first thing Ken asked to do was cut the cards. So now he's got he, and then, then it's take the top card. So now he's back to the stack in that top part there. Right, to make sure that he didn't lose a key in, the, in exactly. that part of the effect, yeah, that right? Guy, that guy was so he knows that. the first card he goes started. to the right pocket. Right. Right, and he knows the second card goes to the left. So he knows the cards and knows where they're at. Mm -hmm. So he's got to have an out. He's got the cards right. There's got to be an out for why it's, they're not the right pockets. But he's got like a, a pretty strong win either way, really. It becomes I don't think a lot, it's that it big becomes, a deal. It becomes a lot less strong after he doubles down on being right. But, like it would be killer strong if he didn't do that. It would be stronger. Right? Well, here, tell me, if guys, what you guys think about this? Okay, he comes in, he hits it. It's a mind blower. Okay, if he misses it and he has the cards right but not the right pockets, it strengthens the whole thing because it's a mentalism act, right? It's like, hey, I, I might not be right. Right, which gets you more going on the edge of your seat. Like he got the cards, but he didn't get it. How did he even do that? You know, because the whole thing seems impossible. Uh. So I don't know that it matters. He's gonna get the cards, right? He's gonna right. get the cards. And if he doesn't get the pockets, it you know, it's one of those deals where we've all done this, right? Where you're just playing for the big, you know, you're standing in front of people, you know you got an opportunity, it's a 50-50 shot. You know, if you do, you're going to knock it out of the park and people's jaws are going to drop, or you might be doing some cleanup on aisle four, you know? So I don't know. I think that might, that's my thought. I mean, and I certainly, you know, it's just my guess. Yeah. What do you guys I, think I, about that? I think that's a great, Steve, that's a, that's a really, really great observation. I, I think you're, you're exactly right. We, we can't know. Like we cannot at the end of the day really know what would have happened, but you're right. I mean, there would have, it would have changed. There would have been less emphasis put on the pockets. The fact that he missed wouldn't have been a big deal because he would have probably put more emphasis on the revelations of the cards themselves. I mean, there's just so many things that could have yeah. happened there. And you're right. He's just, uh, in some ways, he's just riding 
Uh, he's riding the wave that the drum rests on, right? He's riding that sound wave and he's uh, jazzing his way through it. And he's feeling his way yes. through it in a, in a way that only, um, you know, a masterful, uh, a true master can do it. Uh, amazing, dude. This, finding this footage, thank you guys. Uh, this, this footage is really incredible to watch. I, I so everybody... Quick, quick note for those of you who are interested in doing this stuff. You don't need a memorized stack. You just need any old stack. Will do. You just need to know, be able to look at one card and be able to figure out what the next one is, right? So it, you actually just need to be able to perform magic. So don't let anything hang you up there or start thinking that you need the, the greatest uh, memorized deck in the universe or the best arrangement in the universe because Chain Canasta is definitely showing that the arrangement is not the issue here, man. Right? It, it's right. not about that at all. 